Delia with day 10 of decluttering our lives. I'm here with another amazing filter for you this evening. How did I ever like my hair? Super cute. Um, today's message kept coming in about self, about making self a priority. And it's a topic that's spoken about, you know, a lot, very frequently. But again, it's never really taught in how to make yourself a priority or how to even understand that you need to be priority. Yesterday, hi, thanks for joining. Yesterday, I had um, a bunch of my nieces, family come over as we're preparing for our next steps um, that we're bringing into the new year. Uh, podcasts, different series, different platforms, just the whole change that's coming in for all of us. Um, things that are going to be happening with the Empath Toolbox, a lot of healers that I'm bringing in, just, just a whole bunch of awesomeness. And it's really nice because, hi everybody, thanks for joining. It's really nice because we don't really know exactly um, how to prep, but we just kind of start researching like different platforms and a whole bunch of stuff. So I was super grateful to have them here yesterday. And of course, every time we get together, it always turns into a big um, session on how do we improve because we're all kind of pointing fingers on what we should be doing and not doing. But everybody's kind of like not thinking about what they need to be doing or, or are they too hard on themselves, right? So it can go in every direction. But um, it was funny because I was just talking to a friend who's visiting here from Minnesota about the, jo the running joke a friend and I used to have. Um, she was always really big on wanting to save the world. Like she would drop everything that she was doing to go help, you know, somebody else. And we had gotten our feet done and we're talking about how nice our toes look or whatever. And then, um, we had mentioned like how it's, it's sometimes a little difficult to make ourselves a priority. And the comment was made like, yeah, you even forget to like put lotion on your feet before you put sandals on because you're so worried about running to save the world. And that was kind of, again, a running joke for us because every time we thought about how we were trying to save everybody else, the question was, how are you pouring in yourself? How are you pouring into yourself first before you're out there saving the world? And what exactly are we doing, right? Forgetting to put lotion on our own feet before we're out there saving everybody else. So I was hoping that you guys can take inventory on the daily habits that you have created um, or the, the lack thereof when it comes to taking care of you. So a lot of times we sent, we, we seem to like put time aside and energy for other people and their needs, but struggle with figuring out what our own needs are. So this is also part of the decluttering series because we're literally going to sit and take time to figure out what type of things you're actually preoccupied with. And it's not about whether or not they have value or they bring value to you. It's whether or not that pouring you're into is actually uh, prevent you from pouring into yourself, right? Because again, we could talk about it. You can charge yourself and then go help other people. And that works just as great as you, you know, um, trying to avoid other people because sometimes you do too much and then you want self-care. And this is another analogy we we're talking about earlier. It's like, you help, 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 and then you stop, you crash, oh my gosh, I have to recoup, and then I have to get ready to go help again. So it's this vicious cycle, right? Like you still can help people, but that you gotta come back and like um, literally pour into yourself. But what if you can actually make it sustainable so you can still do your whole self-care and make yourself a priority and not have to have these whims of let me go help and then come back and charge and then come back and then charge and then do all that back and forth stuff, right? But you can actually make it sustainable when you first pour into yourself, right? Just like putting lotion on your feet before you put your sandals on. And it sounds crazy, but we got to that point where both of us were so busy consuming everybody else. And then we looked at our feet like, oh my gosh, we haven't even like made time for ourselves. So again, it was a reminder and that's how we literally checked on each other. Like, hey, um, what do your toes look like? How, how are your feet, right? How are you feeling? Um, how does your house look? How do you feel? Um, are you sleeping? Are you taking care of your things, right? Or are you too focused on everybody else's stuff? So part of the decluttering is literally to look at those things that you're pouring into that are literally taking up a lot of your energy. And I say take lightly because if we, if we don't allow it to be taken, it doesn't get taken. So think about how you're not holding or setting these clear boundaries to make sure that you're taking care of yourself because that, that needs to be priority because some people say, oh my gosh, it's because people need me. I'm like, yeah, but what happens if you're not there for them anymore? Has everything you've done for them actually created a habit for them to have or are they always going to need you? Because if that's the case, if they're just always going to need you and they haven't made like the changes they need to make to make that lifestyle sustainable, then aren't you just being their Tylenol? 
they're just taking you when they get a headache and then the headache comes back, you know, four hours later? Like, are you really helping them get to the root cause of the issues that are being created? And if not, I'm going to ask you to step back and, and, and really think about what you can do to change that because we can help till we're blue in the face and you're not really going to help anybody sustain the help that you're giving them, right? So that's for you to kind of look at with people in your life. And yes, it could be family, it could be friends. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we feel bad about not doing it, but you need to sit with that guilt and ask yourself, do I want to, is my body telling me something? Is my heart, my mind telling me something right now that it needs me to take care of? If not, you're going to go through burnout. And there's only a, a, a number of burnouts you could have before you permanently burn, permanently burn out, right? So some people, again, will say make yourself a priority. But at the end of the day, it's like, how do you do that? And hi, mama. Sorry, my little grandbaby wants to say hi. Come here. Say hello. You want to say hello? Come here. Come here. You want to say hello? Ah, she wants to say hello. She got, she got my hair too. <laughs> say hello. My hair filter keeps popping in and out, Merida. There she is. Hi. Okay, she has to go down now. Thank you. Thank you for the love. <laughs> so the reason why I ask you guys to do that is because that is the number one thing that my clients come in with. And that was the number one thing that I always wanted to work on. And I literally wanted to change it, but I didn't know how. So it is about decluttering the things that you're doing um, daily, weekly, monthly. Oh, I only do it, you know, once in a while. Okay, but when you do, how do you feel afterwards? And what can you do to set those boundaries so you're not feeling the overwhelm, the, you know, the frustration, the bitterness, the anger, because that comes with it as well, right? And we spoke shortly about that. We, we spoke about that for a bit. Uh, a few short videos ago. So just kind of taking inventory, just like you've been decluttering your space, declare, declare your mind and the time you're spending pouring into other people that maybe one, maybe they do appreciate it. I'm not saying they don't. But again, are you helping them make it sustainable? Are you teaching them how to do those things and they're actually wanting to learn? Or are you just being that house cleaner that goes and cleans up and then you go back the next week and the house is messy all over again? right? You be the judge of that because only you know based on the relationships you have with those people. And then I also want you to think about the emotions you go through every time. So I used to help people, again, declutter their homes. Many times it was family, friends, whatever. And I remember how, how much I lacked self-care. And we're not just talking pedicures. I'm talking about mind care. I'm talking about soul care, right? Emotional care. Um, I was so consumed in helping everybody else out that I didn't really realize how much that I was hurting myself. I liked it, but I came to realize that that was how I felt that I was um, understanding my worth. So if people made me feel better, I mean, if people needed me and I can help them, it made me feel better. Then as I healed up some wounds, I realized that that was the reason why I was doing it was because it made me feel good. And I'm like, wow, I'm over there kicking my own butt, getting super tired so I can feel good about myself. Hmm, something's wrong with this picture. So that's when the healing process begins. When you get to a point where you say, okay, something's wrong. Like it just doesn't feel right. If this is so right, then why does it feel so wrong? And again, when you're helping them, you don't feel it. It's afterwards when you think about it. And when they only call you when they need you, right? When they only want to call you to complain or, oh my gosh, this is broken. Help me fix it. When we start reflecting, like, what exactly are we doing for people? So those are tough questions to ask yourself. But, you know, your time needs to be better spent pouring into yourself so you can help other people. Because there are people out there, and you're not going to change who you are. You're going to just set healthier boundaries. You're still going to help people, right? Because you're not going to change your heart and your, and your service. But you're going to be helping other people eventually when you understand boundaries. You're going, to be attract, you're going to be attracting other people that are actually going to do something with the help that you give them. They're actually going to want to make it sustainable. And that's when you start attracting the different type of people that are going to pour into you instead of continue to take. And again, they only take because we give to them. So if we learn to preserve and hold boundaries, they can't take from us because we know how much. We say no. We start not overextending ourselves. We stop volunteering our family members. We stop volunteering our time. We start offering our trucks. We start off. We just stop doing stuff like that. And it's not because you're going to be mean. It's just because you start realizing, wow, I'm going to go ahead and be a little more proactive and prevent myself from feeling the negative feelings I normally feel when I do this. Because at the time when I say yes, I'm excited. So I'm going to ask you guys to, before you say yes, stop and ask yourself a few questions. 
Am I doing this to bring value to myself? And that's a tough question to ask. And you don't have, that doesn't have to be the first question. Do I really want to do it? And let me role play. When I do do it, how am I going to be feeling after I do it, a day after, a week after? And what words am I going to say to convince myself that it's okay to do it again? Oh, at least they liked it. Oh, at least they said thank you. Oh, at least they bought me food. Or at least like, yeah, story of my life, right? That's the way it used to work. Until I'm like, well, I could feed myself and they don't really need to buy me anything. I could buy it for myself. But again, you, you start figuring out this entanglement we have with the relationship of self-worth that we tend to give power to others to give to us. But the crazy thing is that that can get taken away at any moment in time. Now, when you pour into yourself and you make yourself a priority and you really check in with your own energy, and you, you have these healthy boundaries that nobody could ever take away from you. So there's times where I used to feel really guilty not helping, especially in the transition of always forever helping and being a people pleaser. And then all of a sudden, like just not doing it as much. It was kind of a, a little tough road because I had to deal with certain emotions and be very honest with myself about whether or not I was doing it for my own personal gain. And it sounds crazy, like I would work hard to make others accept me or like me or feel better about myself. And I'm like, that's crazy. We're not even supposed to work that hard, <laughs> especially not going in the outward direction. It should be going inward. So I do ask myself and my clients all the time. Um, I encourage them to ask themselves, like, can you imagine if all, if you took all the energy you've poured into other people, right? Helping whether you had a good attitude about it or not, it doesn't matter and instead poured it into yourself, how much different would your life be? I know, right? So think about that and ask yourself, ask yourself to be up to hearing the wisdom on how to start changing those habits because a lot of us need to start cutting back on how much we're pouring out and really think about how much we're pouring in. So there's steps to learn how to do that, you guys. Like it's, it's an automatic thing to want to help people. It's not an automatic thing to want to help yourself. Well, for many people, right? Especially people who are, you know, wanting to like people please and, you know, you have this empath ability that you think you're supposed to just, you know, feel everybody's emotions and, you know, just serve everybody all the time. It's like, that's not what you're here to do. It comes naturally, but it doesn't mean that we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to be wise enough to decipher where and when and with whom. And that's the actual challenge that we came here to learn. So I hope that helped a little bit. Um, I really want to make sure that the message comes clear, comes out clear and it could be a little you know, fuzzy sometimes, but if you guys have questions about that, let me know. Um, prioritizing your time, your life, your goals, your health, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. I mean, when I say health, you guys, it's all of them. I, I honestly don't think that one's more important than the other one. I think that they all go hand in hand. Um, however, it's a lot easier to be like, oh my gosh, this person has like a broken leg or a particular physical illness. But when you think about a mental struggle or a spiritual brokenness, like people don't look at it the same. And who cares about how other people are seeing it? How are you seeing it? That's the question. How are you making yourself a priority, your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical health? So declutter the things that are not adding to making it better and start thinking about the things that you can be doing to make it better. It all starts with a plan. And I love when people write things down because it's so in our face, you guys. Like we can't even pretend we don't see it once you write it down. But to get it out of here and out of your heart space and to put it on paper, that's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of us really, really sitting with ourselves and being so truthful with ourselves to start making the necessary changes that we all really need to to, to me because everybody, I mean, no matter where you are right now, because oh, I've gotten so much better. That's awesome. Let me applaud you. But are you where you need to be, right? So what I tell people all the time is yay for your great success. Yay for your strides, right? Yay for what you have accomplished. Let's keep going. So what are we going to do? We're going to look back and say, I used to be there. I'm here. This is where I want to be. So thank God I'm not where I used to be. I'm also not where I want to be, but I'm on my way. So go back and see how far you've come. Use that as fuel and as a reminder of how awesome you feel now. Maybe it wasn't as easy, but how much more awesome you feel now. Use that same fuel to keep pushing yourself forward because we all have better places to be. We all have a better mind to heal. We have, we have so much going on, you guys, that is just beyond this right now comfort zone. And I promise you it's worth, you know, every struggle that may come your way. It's, it's growing pains, right? So continue to love you. Continue to make yourself a priority. 
write down the things that are not allowing you to do that. I don't care if it's somebody else, if it's you or whatever, just have it so in your face and then be real with yourself. How many of these things can I take into my hands and actually um, alchemize, fix, right, change for me to step into this greatness that I'm craving to? Because a lot of us have like are craving this version of ourselves and we can get caught up and like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do it. Start with that. Start with being so real with yourself. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and say, what do I do that at times I complain about doing? What do I do that I get really bitter about afterwards or angry, right, or emotional about? And what kind of response do I want to give next time someone asks for help or I feel like I need to go help somebody? How about you just sit with the weirdness of it? Sit with the weirdness of not helping and be like, okay, this feels so weird. It feels so weird. Instead of just jumping on impulse and like saving everybody. We're not really saving them, you guys. We just tell ourselves that. So sit with it, write, ask yourself these questions, role play, make a different choice, and execute self-care. Awesome. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We will see you tomorrow for our final day of the Decluttering City series, where we're going to just pretty much cover everything we've talked about. And I have a nice handy little printout for you guys to go over. And we'll touch, we'll touch on a couple of other things as well. If you guys have questions, please send a message to me privately or make a comment here, however you feel comfortable. Thank you guys so much for being here. Love you. Have an amazing, amazing last day of this weekend. I hope you've pulled away some revelations from this weekend. Thank you so much. Have an amazing night. Bye, guys.